What's up everyone? In this video I have here the Tebow Tornado and you could see as you can see this box is huge. So I'm gonna go ahead open it up put it together do a first print for this video and then give my initial thoughts and then we'll go from there. So alright let's go ahead and get started. Alright let's go ahead and open it up. I always hear horror stories from GearBest saying uh, that their product came damaged and all that kind of stuff. But let's see how this ended up turning out. Alright. So, like all these printers, they have a nice little foam sheet. Everything looks tightly packed. So, see here oh so it looks like it has like a little bill tack surface and it is big have a book and now let's start popping open all this styrofoam we got the power supply box right here everything is tightly packed I actually really like how they did this. Did a really good job. All right. So as you can see, it is packed very nicely. So I'll go ahead and get everything out of this box and see how much we actually have to assemble. Alright, so everything is unpacked. There is some assembly that we have to do. But first impressions, I looked underneath here. And let's go ahead and flip this up. Whoops. But right here, you can see it's insulated right here. We have a phone protection right here. But we, it's the heated bed is actually insulated and that is a really nice feature I did notice that there is only one stepper motor for the uh, z-axis usually there's two the CR10 also came with one but I think now if you get a newer one it comes with two so I don't know how big of a problem that is but we do have a build tack layer. This is, looks like it's tested from the factory right here. Fills right off. So yeah, we have this mesh that's test printed for the test print. We also have an extra cover in case we need it. So that's good. This is the power supply. Don't know what are the components inside but we'll go ahead start putting to this this thing together so I already can tell because these are just little tie downs but I'm gonna have to take these off and then right here are all the bed screws and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna have to add those the extruder uh, stepper motor it's actually on here it looks like it's kind of cool a little see-through it almost looks like that it can support TPU right off the bat no upgrades needed which would be the first uh, printer that I received from GearBest that will be able to do that so I'm kind of interested I haven't seen any videos on this so uh, I just got asked to do a review on a printer and they sent it they even know this is the printer that they sent me but yeah so let's let's go ahead and get started and put things together all right so I took out all the tie downs that they had right here and as you can see yeah it is a nice insulated bed and that's a really good thing uh, that means I don't have to do the work and insulate this so that is a perk number one it does remind me of the CR10. They still use these same type of rolly systems right here. 
and I had issues with just only one dual Z with the CR10 or uh, one stepper motor for the Z um, but we'll see how this one works maybe maybe it's a little more solid but I can tell that the assembly is almost the same as the CR10 so let's go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the side for now I'm gonna just go ahead and check the belts right now and they do feel a little loose so I'm gonna to have to tighten those however this is not loose just making sure that nothing is loose there's these uh right here uh, you got these nuts that you can uh, tighten and right as of right now I have forgotten the name of those nuts but you'll probably see it on the screen but uh, we can tighten each one where the bed does not move and I have to say this is a pretty solid piece of steel right here The, uh, I have to say, this, however, feels, this is acrylic, actually. Yeah, this is not steel at all. So they went with what appears to be acrylic bed, and then they put on top a sort of uh, a bill tack type of surface. So, huh, kind of interesting. Uh... With these type of surfaces, they're easy to scratch with a hot end. So if your hot end's going and your your level's not right and your hot end digs into this, it'll leave a huge mark all on it. So you want to make sure your bed is level before you start anything. All right, so this looks pretty solid. The belt is a little loose. We would tighten it right here, though. We'd loosen these... Uh, screws right here and we pull this back to tighten the the belt however this is something we could worry about later on so right here we have two holes on each side and let me move this that is where let's see so we're going to have, need our tool kit that it comes with. Extra wires. This. All right. So this will have all of our screws and accessories that we're going to be needing. This. I'll show you where this goes here in a second. Yeah, so this is just like the CR-10. Assembly-wise. However, I do have to admit, though, the packing was way better than Reality's prep packing. And I really do actually like the look of this. So that's a that's a plus two. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and get this started. So we're gonna find the right Allen wrench. And what's the best way to do this? Move this over. So basically, this is going to sit on top just like this. And so we can have our printing and all that kind of stuff like this. Check this belt. This belt is okay. It's a little loose. I can pull it down pretty easy right here. So it's a little loose. That gets tightened right here. So I think what we'll do, let's go ahead and lay it down on its side, like so. And we'll just put in the screws. little hard to see 
but basically I hand tightened all four of these screws in and now we're going to go ahead and tighten it and how we're going to tighten it is we're just going to tighten each screw slowly. Voila. All right, so let's go ahead. So this here, right here, this bag. So you got two of these T's, right? One's just for first uh, additional support and this one is also for support, but has an end stop as well and this is the z end stop so it knows when it's at the bottom so this they made it so it's adjustable it only needs to be slightly adjustable so we'll adjust this later when everything's plugged in well, let's go ahead start on this next task let's see all right, so this right here goes on the stepper motor side. All right, so these things right here. All right, so these things right here are called T-nuts. Right here are T-slots. And so we're just going to kind of line these up just like so. So just so you can get everything in. All right, let's go ahead. And put these in. There we go. So now it's perfectly flat in there. So we're going to grab the next tool to tighten these down. With these T nuts, you want to make sure that the nut is facing for these two down and for these two across. So you, they need to be perpendicular with the T-slot. Now I'm just gonna tighten the bottom ones for now. Now here, these are gonna need to be adjusted but for now, I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way to the top and then tighten. And then all we have to do is just adjust it down from there. And this is just so it tells the, the motherboard, the printer or controller board, that the Z in stop has hit the bottom, has bottom note. So this part right here hits this end stop the bottom plate. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and flip around. And we're gonna go ahead and install this one. And so we should have, and we do, and it does come with extras too, it looks like. So we're gonna need three, four T-nuts. Gonna need four screws. This part is done. And I don't think I did a good tightening job on this side, so quickly. Let's go. And for now, I'm not gonna worry about this because we're gonna have to adjust this. So here is the front of our TiVo tornado now we'll have to do the bed assembly which is a five bag so on this there's uh on the four corners there's little holes to put in the screws 
you have these springs that will go right in between this and the bed, this middle plate and the bed. So you have these long screws. So the bed will sit on top of this. The long screws will go through. And then underneath, you're going to put these. These are adjustable nuts where you, you can adjust the level of the bed. So let's go ahead and get this started. So this is kind of an annoying little part because you have four of these screws to put on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and put the screw through here just like that. And then I'm just going to loosely I'm just going to loosely put this uh, adjustable nut on. All right, so it's just loosely on there. Grab the next spring. Just like this. put the adjustable nut on. And then do the same for the back. So that is our bed and now I kept it loose for now uh, we're gonna have to get all the wiring plugged in and we're gonna have to make our adjustments to this uh, the Z end stop now let's go ahead and check tightness before we do any wiring so So these, this wheel assembly back here, this is perfectly tight. If this were to move when I wiggled it, then uh, you would have to tighten the nuts in the back until it was stayed perfectly leveled. Now the be belt is a little loose, so we're going to grab our tool here. So again, this is X axis, this is the Y axis, and then this is the Z axis up and down. So let's go ahead and tighten the X axis belt by just loosening these and you don't have to loosen them by much. Once they're loosened, you're going to just, I put my, I put my thumb right here and then I just push and this feels like a good tightness right here. And then go ahead and tighten it. Once you have one down and tight, I always check again. All right. So that's, let's see. So that's probably good enough. I would like to see it a little tighter, but we'll just see how it performs. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten this. This one has four screws that we're going to have to just slightly loosen. All right, so now that's loose. We're going to pull and then tighten. And that is a good belt tighten right there. All right. Yep, that's tighten. Let it push back and forth to make sure it feels smooth. Again, these are not tightened, so the bed's kind of loose. 
but we're just checking for the smoothness of going th through the uh, y-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to the power supply. All right, so here we have our power supply and it's gonna be sitting on the left side of the printer. We do have a reset button then I don't know what this is that looks like a seal right here. I'm guessing this part is actually to the power supply so we can adjust the power and make sure that it is running a nice about 12.5 volts into the system. It might be 24 volts, I'm not sure. It doesn't say anywhere. Um, here we have our SD reader and here our USB. That's the power supply. And then right here are gonna be all of our connectors and we'll go ahead and start connecting everything. All right, so how these power connectors work and they actually helped us out a lot, but they'll actually tell us where they go. For example, let's zoom in right here. This says limit switch Z negative. So this will go to the end stop of the Z and this one is for the Z motor, which happens to be on this side. So that's pretty easy. So how I do it is I'm making sure none of the wires are in the way. And we're gonna go ahead and plug everything in. So this goes underneath it. Yep, so it goes underneath it. Move this bed out of the way. And then we're just gonna go ahead and, and it fits. There's only one way to plug this in. Let's see, and just like that. Now move over to the actual stepper motor. So the wire's a little short, so it's a little tight, but we're gonna go ahead all right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the stepper motor wire, which also is one way. So you can only put this in one way. Try to get it where I'm not blocking the camera. Just like that. And so that is the Z stepper motor and the Z end stop, basically. All right. Next on the list, Next on the list is the Y motor and switch. So again, flip this around, push the bed all the way forward. And here, here we have the Y. Let's see if I can't zoom in on that. So this is the Y end stop and here's the Y stepper motor. Let's go ahead and plug that in now. Now this one has a little extra because it's moving back and forth. Except, yeah, I said that wrong. It doesn't affect it. Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the stepper motor first. Oh, and by the way, by the way, you always want to plug in your stepper motors when there's no power. That's plugged in. All right, so what's connected to the bed is the heater and thermostat for the bed, but we'll connect that last. And also right here for the X axis, this is for the heater and thermostat for the actual uh, extruder. So let's go ahead and now do this, the last of the stepper motors. We have our X motor, we have our X limit switch, and we have our extruder motor, and we're going to go ahead and plug in this, these set, three sets. So let's turn this printer again. So here is our X motor right here. Here is our extruder motor right here. 
and our limit switch is right underneath here. Let's see if I can get a better view. So yeah, right here. So let's go ahead and do the limit switch. And this one's difficult with big hands. But got it in, so I'm going to use the Allen wrench to kind of help guide me. There we go. Make sure it's nice and tight. All right, we're nice and tight. It's in. Here is the X motor, and this is what you don't want to mix up. Don't mix up the X motor with the extruder. So the X motor, X stepper motor, will go right here underneath. All right, got to figure it out. Okay, plugging it in backwards. There we go. It's hard to see. So make sure you're not plugging it in backwards, and this should slide right in. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and plug in the extruder motor, which they really don't give you a whole lot of room to work with. Okay. All right, so that's in. All right. So that's the wiring for all the end stops and the stepper motors. Now let's go ahead right here. This here is for the X axis or the extruder um, heater core and the extruder um, temperature sensor. And you can see right here that it has multi pins in it and they're on the back here Let's see if you can see there's one with just four pins and one with multi pins so this one is obviously for the multi pins so let's go ahead and plug in this and there's a little notch in it so you just gotta line up the notch and so you don't plug it in wrong tighten it down and now we're gonna go ahead and find our bed and here core and plug that in all right now it did come with some zip ties so we can pretty this up well let's go ahead and get this plugged in and We'll get it to home to the Z so we can actually adjust our bed. Also what we're going to have to check is we're going to need a tape measure. And we're going to have to measure this bar and compare it with this side. Make sure that it's all leveled. I had problems with the CR10. I know this isn't CR10, so maybe this one won't have any issues, but we'll uh, see. So now, so here is the zip ties, extra extruder head, and it comes with an extra temperature sensor, it looks like, just in case it's gone bad. So let's. Yeah, let's plug it in. So let's go ahead and switch her on. So there should be a switch right here. So far, so good. And I have to say, it's quiet. And I know I'm comparing this a lot with the CR10, but I mean, it almost looks like a CR10 clone. It is different. These bar, uh, these brackets right here, all these brackets are much thicker. They went with an acrylic bed, not sure how I feel about that, but they did go with acrylic bed right here with a sort of build tack on top. Uh, what else is different is the actual extruder. So uh, the uh, extruder housing group is, is completely different. So we'll have to play around with that. One thing. I already don't like is that it only has one stepper motor on this side however everything is thicker everything seems pretty tight it may work out not sure 
this right now popped it on it's quiet when you pop on the CR10 it's you hear the fans and everything so that's kind of cool let's go ahead we're getting so I'm checking right here and let's go ahead and zoom in right here so right here I'm getting a temperature reading so that's good that means that our bed and extruder or extruder and our bed are uh, correctly uh, hooked up together so now what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead oh look it has custom commands I don't know what that means Button's a little weird. You kind of have to press it hard. Oh, okay. So this is just. We can home it right here. As you can see, the printer is homing. And this is where we would adjust our bed to the home. So right now, we are homed. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this. And I'm going to tighten it until it scrunches down. And what we're looking at is for this uh, nozzle right here to not touch the bed anymore. And we're going to go ahead and tighten all four of these adjustable nuts right here. So this is our preparation of bed leveling. And so now, now we're going to go back to this screen and we're going to have to disable the stepper motors. So our stepper motor, let's go ahead and hit auto home real quick. Get another home. Just make sure it's good because our bed was in the way when we did the first home. Now we're going to hit disable stepper motors or uh, disable steppers, whatever. And now it's disabled now we can move it back and forth and we just want to make sure that this is not touching anywhere yet because we're going to have to make adjustments all right let's see here before we begin with the bed level we're going to measure with a tape measure to make sure that both sides are even we want this as parallel as possible or yeah as straight as possible if it's up slightly our prints are going to be kind of whacked and not as accurate so i have my tape measure here and we're just going to measure each side so this is 10 and a half millimeters right on the dot and this is 10 and a half millimeters right off the dot that's actually really nice to have that happen in the first try. So this might be totally different than the CR-10. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start the process of leveling the bed. One thing I do suggest is these knobs right here. Uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt. They do have other type of knobs where, or they, you can actually print some knobs, I think. At least you can do it with the CR-10, and these look like the same exact knobs that the CR-10 uses. So you should be able to use those to make them bigger so it's easier to adjust than these little tiny nuts. So we're going to need a piece of paper. So we're going to go ahead and place our piece of paper right here and we're going to start loosening oops that's tightening loosening this until it hits the piece of paper all 
All right. So just barely moving the piece of paper right now. Now we're going to slide it all the way over right here and do the do the same on this side. So this is it. We have the TiVo uh, auto leveled. So let's go ahead. It does not come with filament, so luckily I have a bunch. But let's see here. I'm just going to print directly off the SD card and see if they even. Let's first off, let's see if they even put anything on the SD card. So I have here the SD card. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. All right, card has been insert. Oh. Let's go see if, let's go ahead and see if there's anything on the SD card. So we have the XYZ test, the TiVo test, uh, test, whatever, the spool holder, huh, oh yeah, I didn't notice that, it doesn't come with a spool holder, but it does come with, uh, the G-code to print one, so let's go ahead and print that, but we're gonna first, go, first we're gonna need a, you know, preheat, let's go to, Preheat to PLA and preheat to PLA. Ah, there's the noise. So now it went from really quiet to really noisy. But that's okay. As long as it prints good, I, I care less about the noise. All right, let's go ahead and get some filament. And I do have another spool holder that we can use for now. All right, so I have my filament right here. I've already cut the piece right here so it goes in nice and smoothly. And we're gonna be sliding in the filament right here. Now we're gonna hit, we're gonna go ahead and grab this and pull it back. And then we're just kind of filling where our filament goes in. And you can see it going in through here. And now we're gonna just do a kind of final push. All right, now it's feeding through. I felt some of that filament come out. And now I'm gonna go to the uh, power supply and we're just gonna print the spool holder and let it do its thing so I see that it auto leveled here's a little extra filament that came out take the spatula out so it's heating up to 230 degrees I don't think this was meant for PLA so there's a little bit of white in there from our uh, from the test filament. So what I think I will do, I think this was meant for ABS, what was ever on here. What I'm gonna do is just lower the temperature slightly. Right now, we're at 230 degrees. 
so I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that I mean it's not not gonna be mad bad for the PLA but you know we still want to be at the the correct temperature so we're gonna go ahead and go to tune and we're gonna go to nozzle and we're gonna just turn it down and I think I'll turn it down to 210 degrees and again this button's kinda hard to push for some reason I don't know why but we can see the extruder temperature dropping All right, the print is complete. It took about uh, just under six hours, and I have already kind of tugged on it, and I I just know that this print is gonna be hard to get off this uh, print surface. So in the future upgrade, I already know I'm gonna either get a mirror panel or uh, some sort of glass plate on top of this, because this is great, and I might use it for, you know, ABS or uh, polycarbonate if well this is a E3D so I looked up some specs and this is an E3D so it should be able to support polymaker uh, polycarbonate so I don't know well uh, let's go ahead and try to get this off There we go. All right, so I was able to kind of pry it off. But in doing so, I cracked it. Oh well, I'll just glue that and it'll be fine. So yeah, I will be investing into a mirror panel or some sort of glass bed. So actually, I think I have mirrors so that's what I'll probably use because I so I don't break my prints when I take it off and what I did was just pry it off but this this piece is still good I can just I could just glue it and it'd be fine but let's talk about the quality I mean it is gorgeous this is the very first print with this this printer um, there is like a bulge right here but it almost looks like it was designed for that. I'll have to look at the STL file. But everywhere else it's just gorgeous. And I'm guessing this... Oh. So yeah. It'll sit right here. And I could just put a filament reel on there. Probably more into the back so I'll set that in the back and I can hold my filament very cool alright so initial thoughts on this printer is so far I, I really like this printer I think it turned out quite honestly better than the CR10 initially I haven't printed in anything tall I do have a concern with it only having a single uh, Z separate motor instead of dual Z's to, for it to go up and down. But it is thick metal, a lot thicker than what the CR10 has. And I keep comparing it again with the CR10 because it's almost like it, but almost like an upgraded version. It looks like it has a Titan extruder. So that's actually a cool feature. I'm wondering if it can handle TPU. And yeah, so there's really no no plastic parts on here uh, except for the extruder housing. And that's this, but other than that, I mean everything else is metal. Let's see right here. So right here that holds the Z rod this is also all metal and it's a pretty thick piece of sheet metal 
so this is a really sturdy printer um yeah i i at this moment i really have nothing negative to say except i wish it had a glass bed so then this would be an option with the cr10 i i use lock build but i also have it where i could flip it and just use the glass plate and i use only lock build for primarily polycarbonate and i don't really print with abs i print with petg because i think petg is better than abs so and then i don't really have to worry about anything warping or coming up like i would with abs but i can only see two things i i want to do with it as far as upgrades are concerned and i looked up the board the board is able to support a bl touch so i'm going to add probably a bl touch to this and make it so i can uh, and the BL touch will be for auto level and I want to add a good glass panel and then I'll, I'm probably going to print a couple big prints uh, a couple prints that are tall and just see how that Z the the whole uh, Z bar handles the print with my CR10 I was having problems even with this correctly tightened uh, I was having problems with it offsetting so as it was going up either uh, the, I think this side was dropping slightly and it would print kind of crooked well so we'll see how good this one does it is it's a solid printer that's for sure but yeah I'm actually really excited about this one yeah it's a really solid printer I'm pretty impressed with it and so I, I look forward to continuing continue to print with it do a few modifications on it but I probably won't do too many because it prints so well and it is noisy oh yeah that is another thing it is a noisy printer it's quiet when you flip it on but as soon as you turn on the heater and have the stepper motors engaged it becomes pretty noisy so Maybe I'll add stepper dampers or something along those lines. But all in all, I'm pretty impressed with this printer. So if you found this video helpful during the build or initial thoughts, please uh, give me a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And as always, thank you guys. Thank you all for your support. And thank you all for watching.